Fred McCoy. I'm Sheila. And uh, the topic we're going to discuss today is the uh, peace treaty that was uh, signed in 1976 with uh, Devil Lance Hatfield's only living son, who was Willis Hatfield, and the oldest living McCoy at the time, who was Jim McCoy, James McCoy. Everybody called him Jim or Uncle Jim in that area. And uh, in 1976, uh, the Hatfields and McCoys got together uh, via Jimmy McCoy Wolford. Jimmy Wolford, his mother was uh, Rose Wolford, mm -hmm. and of course she married a uh, she married a Wolford. She was actually uh, Rose McCoy, but uh, for her maiden name changed, uh, Jimmy uh, he always went by Jimmy McCoy Wolford. He would throw the Warford in there, but he wanted to be known as a McCoy. And this was Jimmy McCoy's uh, uh, grandfather, James McCoy, and uh, him and Willis, got, Jimmy set it up to where they would have a, uh, a dedication at the uh, McCoy Cemetery where six of Randall and Sarah's children are buried at Hardy, Kentucky, right. Blackberry Fork. And uh, Sheila's gonna once again show the the pictures uh, i'll put them again at the end of the video so you can uh, look at them and take your time pause it read things whatever so you can see it better than uh, what we've got it now sure this is again this is one of the boards of many that we have in the museum that um, we try to at least start the topic off where we can explain the rest of it but uh, here's the monument down here with sheila here i am <clears throat> That's the McCoy Monument that was placed there at the dedication in 1976. Yeah. And uh, this is actually the graveyard that is now off limits um, from everybody except uh, McCoy uh, descendants. And we'll explain, we'll do a video on that later on explaining how that came about. But that, that is the monument that nobody, very few people has ever seen because it's off limits. But in 1976, that is the monument that they were dedicating on behalf of the McCoys. And uh, Willis Hatfield, she'll show you in the close-ups. Mm -hmm. Willis Hatfield, that's Devil Answers' only living son. And that's James McCoy there. And here's James McCoy. That's James McCoy's uh, grandfather, which was Uriah McCoy. Um, <clears throat> Here's uh, James's wife, Jimmy's wife. There's him and his wife. And um, here's the children. Sheila and I done a book. Sheila basically done a book on Jimmy McCoy Wolford um, while he was in the veterans um, hospital uh, and um, during his latter years. It started out as a scrapbook, more or less, just doing something for him. And he really enjoyed it. And, he did. He sang songs to us and told us a lot of stories. A lot of history, mm -hmm. uh, as he was a Hatfield McCoy historian himself. In fact, we'll discuss some of the, not today, but in our videos, that reminds me of how he come up with a song, Six Foot Tall, Devil Ants was Six Foot Four, and all this and that. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we asked him about how that came about, uh, because everybody knows that's followed history that Devil Ants was five six, but yep. and he, he said he done that just to make the song his marketing was gonna to be to the Hatfields and he thought that was funny. He done it as a joke to begin with and it took off. It took but off, yeah. That's another video altogether. <clears throat> uh what happened in nineteen seventy six is they had this dedication of this monument at the McCoy mm -hmm. Cemetery. And in fact we've got one of the shotguns in on display in here that my dad had bought from uh, James McCoy and Jimmy. Yeah. And after they was getting ready to have this dedication, um, Jimmy come back to the supermarket, where my mom and dad owned the supermarket. He come back by and asked dad if he could use that gun for a photo shoot that they were gonna have the uh, monument uh, dedication and the peace <laughs> treaty, uh, making peace between the Hatfields and McCoys. And Willis Hatfield was gonna bring a shotgun and and he wanted, uh, Jim was going to have the shotgun and he was going to do a photo op. And dad said, sure. Dad loaned the gun back to him that he'd bought. And uh, 
my dad, he told him, he said, Jimmy, you're going to fool around and have a killing over it. You get a bunch of Hatfields and McCoys together and flashing guns. And Anyway, at the end of the day, uh, he brought the gun back to dad a few days after the dedication. And he was telling dad they didn't use it. He said they left them in the vehicles because they was afraid that after he got started thinking that everybody he was talking to was telling him, you're going to fool around and start, start this feud back. back. <laughs> yeah, start yeah. it back up. <laughs> yeah. And he told us that in the hospital. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we got a lot of tapes. We got Aww. hundreds of hours of tapes. Of, he was so sweet. Of Jimmy. But they left the car, the guns in the cars. They left the guns in the cars and just done the photo op, shaking hands. And, um, you know, back then, uh, um, well, you back then, you can't say it nowadays, but a uh, uh, man's word was his bond. Yes. And, yes. And uh, that's what they had there was a, a handshake. handshake. And, a, yep. and that was their bond as far as... Uh, and it was symbolic. It was just to show the feud had been over since uh, Cotton Top had been uh, uh, hung, mm -hmm. and it had ended in uh, 1890, 91. So the feud had been over. Uh, <clears throat> they were intermarrying and everything all along, but uh, mm -hmm. it was just something they wanted to do to promote the Hatfields and McCoys. Now, where we're at today, we're in Liberty, Kentucky. The address here is 14 Houstonville Street, Liberty, Kentucky. Sheila's going to eventually do some videos going through the museum. Yeah. We have over 13,500 square foot here of museum, and it's it's basically full of items that uh, my grandmother and grandfather, and mother and father, and, and uh, Sheila and I have co uh, collected over the years. Yeah, we've collected a long time. And. What's happened over the years is just like our children is not that interested in the, the yeah. items that we have. Yeah. Uh, as family members die on both sides, Hatfield and McCoy, we become known as the people to go to, either mother or us. And now mother just passed away a couple weeks ago, or a month Nothing. ago. And uh, so it's really left a void. But uh, during that time, people would contact her and, because they knew she was this avid collector and, and now they, they know we are. So when somebody passes away, they always contact us uh, to get our, uh, to see, give us the first offer on an item or items that they may have that somebody's passed away in the family and, and they no longer have a use for and, and they want it to be able to be seen and, and they know that's what we do. And we put it on display. Um, how'd he end up in Liberty, Kentucky? Jim had, Two, Jimmy had two daughters here. He had one named Spicy and one named Marie. And he came here to visit with them, and he had gotten sick while he was here. So he went to the doctor, to Dr. John Price. And he really loved Dr. Price. So he decided he was gonna stay here because of his two daughters, of course, and uh, John Price. Um, he was getting old. We asked, yeah. or Sheila asked Jimmy, uh, when we were uh, taking notes for her book, yeah. And uh, what made uh, Jim uh, move, he, he died in Casey County Hospital right yeah. down the street here. And um, Dr. Price was with him. 1984, and his doctor, John Price, was sitting beside him when he died. In fact, they called from New York, uh, from um, Wall Street Journal, and uh, was asking Dr. Price about, uh, they had an article on, uh, Jim McCoy where he had uh, they had made peace with the Hatfields mm -hmm. and uh, they had interviewed him but uh, we we asked Jimmy uh, what made your dad uh, move to Liberty and ultimately die in Liberty and he said that as his uh, as his grandfather rather got older that he uh, uh, became sicklier and he felt safe with Dr. Price. He wanted to be near his doctor and that's why he just moved down here. And yep. this is ultimately where uh, Jim McCoy died, was in Liberty, Kentucky. And we, we had this museum at one time in Renfro Valley, Kentucky. And of course, mom and dad and, and grandma all had it at a Blackberry supermarket, had several items at that time. But we thought it was only befitting that with Jim McCoy dying in Casey County, Liberty, this is the, the town, uh, the county seat here, Liberty is. The courthouse is directly across from us here. And 
Liberty City Hall is directly behind us, so we're right in the middle of, of town. The heart of it. The mm -hmm. heart of it. And, uh, but that's how they, we ended up uh, between Dr. John Price, which is a, a well-known mm -hmm. doctor in the area, mm -hmm. a good doctor uh, and a good man, and we just felt um, with the history that Liberty had to Jim McCoy and with him dying here, what better place for us to move our museum rather than going back to Pike County. Uh, we like it down in this area. And uh, so this is where we're at now. And that's how we came about. And that's the peace treaty between uh, Devil Lance Hatfield's only living son mm -hmm. and the oldest living McCoy. And that was uh, Jim McCoy. Sheila, you got anything else I'm leaving uh, out? No. She's going to post pictures of this. And of course, some of this stuff is out of some of our books. Uh, and she'll get close up so you can stop your video on it and read it if you want to. Um, up here, that's 1976 uh, yeah. when she puts that on there. And um, here's Jimmy's family. His family. Yeah, that's his children. And uh, yeah, son in laws, daughter in laws. There's his, uh, his tombstone. Uh, he's buried at Mountain Memory Gardens back home. Uh, Jim McCoy and uh, my grandmother, both Ella Jane McCoy, who also our daughter's name, yep. they, they both died in 1984. They died the same year. And uh, 